In 331 BC, Alexander sets off on an epic journey to visit the oracle at Siwa. He is seeking proof of his divine existence. It was about 300 miles. The approach to Siwa would have been on a plateau, relatively flat land, but sand dunes all around. The oracle was a well-known destination. There would have been a path, but the path could easily become obscured. You would have a situation where you would have searing heat during the day, incredible cold at night. A sandstorm could, could come up very quickly where you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Alexander and his men do become lost after a terrible sandstorm. But legend has it that two birds saved them by guiding the group to their destination, the extraordinary oasis of Siwa and the temple of Zeus Amon. Well, that visit to the Oracle, this is one of the most fascinating episodes really in the whole history of the ancient world. I think the question is, had Alexander in some way already masterminded a bit of a publicity exercise that he was the son of Zeus? Alexander enters the temple alone while his men wait outside. Here we have Alexander. He's a young man in his early 20s. He's already accomplished incredible things. And yet, and he's in a place where suddenly He's being treated, at least by the native Egyptians, as a god on earth. And you have to ask yourself, what is he thinking? And he's certainly a long way from Macedonia at this point. Alexander came out of the temple. They all rushed forward and said, Alexander, Alexander, what did you ask? And he said, I'm not saying that. And he said, but we heard him call you the son of Zeus. And he said, all right, you can go with that story if you want. And it became then publicized by his publicist, and Alexander was allowed this um, version of his identity to spread because it, I think, picked up with previous suspicions on his part, possibly beginning from the stories of his mother, that he was somehow more than human. From then on, Alexander's loyal scribe Callisthenes would call his master a god on earth. And the Egyptians would reaffirm that notion, depicting his image on some of the most sacred temple walls. At Luxor, Alexander is shown with raised hands, worshipping his divine father, the god Amon. Being a deity, uh, he was immune from criticism. He was on a different plane, a different plateau, and far superior. But being a pharaoh, a living god, is not enough for Alexander. He is determined to defeat his archenemy Darius once and for all. 